Right, the, the bad news is we, we were in agreement at the start of this on a lot of themes. Um, the good news is they haven't covered all of them off, so we've got one left, which won't um, sort of bore you and add something to it. Um, my name is Matt Woodford. Uh, Tarmac and Media, for many of you who don't know us, are a financial services specialist, and so we work globally in uh, investment banking, um, uh, asset management, uh, retail life and pension. So we're very specialist, and, and within that, B2B is obviously crucial. In the financial services sector, B2B is, uh, whilst it's still a, a relatively small part of the actual spend, it's absolutely crucial for a lot of the distribution channels. So our, our focus is, uh, and our history has been very much on, on B2B over the years. Um, we are an independent agency um, with a global footprint, which is increasingly uh, important in our sector. Um, and I suppose unusually, um, we're, well, we're digitally integrated, we're digitally led. Um, about 40% of our headcount is um, made up of digital specialists. The rest of the agency are digital proficient in the sense of multimedia. So digital is absolutely crucial to us. It's also a huge percentage of our profits, which is even more important. Um, but it's, you know, financial services has its own sort of challenges. Um, and, uh, and, and sort of issues with, with uh, B2B, which I want to cover off today in digital, primarily around things like compliance, um, regulatory issues and things like that. So one of the challenges we've had over the years, um, sort of developing our proposition and trying to lead clients, which is, I think, very important because in the financial services sector, you know, it's, it's not a sector maybe like tech where clients will come to you and say, we want to do social, we want to do search, we want to do more digital innovation. We really need to help drive them through it because it's quite a conservative sector, which is quite happy to stick with B2B print and, uh, and events as a model. So where we see at the moment the sort of challenge in the B2B space, um, from an audience perspective, uh, financial services segmentation, I think you know, B2B segmentation generally is constantly shifting. So as publishers, you know, the biggest challenge I think for you going forward is keeping your products in line with these shifting segments and be able to deliver well-segmented products, very relevant products, because uh, you know, as these shift and our communication shift in line with them and, and a lot of creative is, uh, is segment-driven, um, we need to be able to target these groups specifically with unique messages. And the theme I think we picked up on earlier is that this is uh, about communication. It's not about just broadcast promotion. And you know, the closer we can get to one-to-one -one communications and relevancy in the advertising, the better. So constantly shifting. And, and you know, we're very focused. We only have financial services clients. And even then, it's still a challenge to keep pace of shifting distribution um, trends, shifting B2B segments, as many of our clients still struggle to get, get it right themselves. And, and part of that also is the media fragmentation. Um, you know, many of you will have multiple platforms for your products under single brands. Um, you know, keeping, keeping pace with that, keeping, trying to really understand the audiences and what they're doing and how they're interacting because, you know, we're not really interested in buying an online version of a magazine or event that is branded and delivers similar live content to the magazine or the website. You know, we need to understand the touch points, the differences in sort of usage and behavior of your audiences. And the more you can deliver, um, the, you know, the better we can understand these. And secondly, just picking up on some of the LinkedIn um, conversations, content is key. Um, a, a trend we're seeing a lot of at the moment is um, clients more willing to sit down with other clients to talk about marketing challenges than they are with publishers and agencies, and quite happy to um, share information about market entry strategies where people have already got their product development strategies and things like this. So peer-to-peer -peer marketing is a big shift that we're, that we're following. And, and we can see um, the challenge will be to harness that because you're going to see a lot of the, the reliance on, um, on agencies and publishers um, shifting away unless you can keep track of it. And also distribution of client content. Um, if we take an, an investment bank, an average investment bank, they'll probably produce more content or as much content as many of you will as publishing houses. So distribution of that content, which is all very good, very credible, very well researched and very well um, planned, it is absolutely crucial in, as part of the sort of marketing challenge. So I think the, the, the model slightly shifted in the sense that you know the consumer, the, the, the B2B audience, aren't just relying on independent content anymore. There's a lot of great stuff, and a lot of the briefs we're picking up at the moment are to to distribute this content. So the publishers that can handle both your own content but also become distributed of other people's content, I think there's there's a big commercial opportunity there. Um, just moving on to um, the sort of toolkit we want to use to, to, to create this as, as sort of planners, as, um, uh, as, as agency people, I think the challenge for us um, when we're working with you guys, you know, you're innovating your products all the time, you're trying to track your audiences, we've got to do the same. And the mantra that we're always banging on to our sort of planners is, 
you know, avoid being a press planner, avoid being a digital planner. Um, you know, you want to think of the broadest toolkit. The broadest toolkit is to start in the B2B space with, with the client's brief and saying, if you employed an additional salesperson, would that answer the brief? And if the client can come back and say, no, it won't, then we ta start talking about comms. And advertising is very much the last point of that. Um, some of the most effective campaigns I think we've ever run have, have been uh, much more sort of face-to-face -face, um, and, and, you know, a, a mixture of all the different sort of opportunities for content distribution, whether it's as simple as creating bespoke um, sort of formats uh, with publishers just to create some sort of standout and, um, and interaction, the content distribution thing, which, as I mentioned, is really crucial, but also content creation. Um, took a brief from Investment Bank yesterday where we need to find a global publisher to create some um, some research and distribute a big event in a few months. And, you know, they've started to move away from looking to research agencies to do this. So somewhere in this room, hopefully, there's someone who can answer that brief this afternoon to save us having to do a huge amount of pitching next week. Um, but content is, is, is absolutely key. But we mustn't forget, and I think this has already been mentioned earlier, the power of traditional media, because it is a sort of threat and on the balancing um, of, of the, some of the propositions you do, and fully integrate, integrated campaigns are still the way forward. Um, some, you know, in our world, very compliance heavy, regulatory heavy, we've got to get our targeting right, but still, right now, the medium that's offering in the UK and, and Europe the most uh, value, the most targeting opportunities, the most impact is, is the outdoor market. It's, it's a, um, a demand is okay, supply is increasing heavily, um, and you get some great tangible feedback from it. So, on the one hand, we can get great data, great analysis from you as digital publishers, but, you know, the integrated parts and the real impact of some of the other things that we can do mustn't be underestimated. And if we take all of that and look at how we might encapsulate that into a campaign, I've just got a quick case study from a, a US management consultancy firm that we work with. Um, and it was a, it was a challenging brief. Um, probably unlike Mindshare, most of our briefs um, end with the um, rather painful uh, low budget um, part of the brief. Um, but we had a challenge to really launch uh, a business called Alex Partners into Europe and raise their profile. Um, a management consultancy that have got some fantastic talent, all from big... Um, uh, big firms, but the, the challenge is that when someone, you know, when your, your business goes into uh, trouble and you've got to get one of these firms in, you know, the big four grab all the limelight and they're always straight in there. So we needed to uh, sort of compete and get the profile up a bit. Um, the issue really was about, um, you know, as always, budget. You know, we can't compete with some of the big, say, the Tiger Woods Accenture campaign that was running at the time. But, you know, inherently as part of the planning process, we could see there was a lot of content, there were a lot of opinion, there were a lot of people in the room all the partners who really had a lot to say and add to the campaign. Um, and, you know, trying to avoid the sort of case study, this is what we did for a business type campaign because that, had, that was a sort of well-trodden path. Um, and we had a very tight target audience. There are only about three or 400 people globally that, that could hit this. So again, targeting was, was crucial. So as part of that, we had to sort of come up with a, a, a sort of sensible comms plan, which um, uh, gave us some guidance and gave us some, some sort of structures to the campaign. And, and really, it was about making sure that we didn't end up in the sort of bottom left um, entrant where you're kind of doing nothing particularly well. Um, and if we took, say, the Accenture campaign that was running at the time with Tiger Woods across airports globally, which was a fantastic broadcast campaign and a very expensive one, you know, reach and impact as a brand building positioning, um, it was ticking all the boxes. And our big four were sitting in the market leading uh, box where they had you know strong global brands, big ad budgets, lots of content. So we really felt that the the sort of creative engagers thing was the thing we had to focus on. And again, this was all about education, um, content rich advertising, content rich media solutions. And we really had to take that sort of intelligent approach because the budget wasn't even a tenth of our our nearest competitor. To sort of answer that uh, that brief, um, we created a content hub um, with FT.com. Um, it, was, it allowed us to obviously um, co-brand, it allowed us to get the, to, to ride on their sort of distribution, but it also allowed us to um, get some really good video and white paper content into the market at a, at a very rapid um, and, and sort of timely way. So contextually targeting um, a lot of the content with news items. Alex Partners' big sort of USP was um, uh, financial sort of fraud um, investigation. So a company finds that they've got a big problem with their accounts, they get them in, they can do due diligence on a global firm in a few days, and they can, and they can really sort of get things back on track very quickly. So they were sort of their sort of message was, you won't know you need us until you need us. Um, so having content that was pushed out that was very contextually targeted, that was very relevant um, to news headlines on the site was was crucial. 
Um, but we had to create some impact. We had to create a campaign feel, because it's fine having a really fancy content distribution portal on FT.com and some quite neat search and some quite neat, neat sort of digital distribution. But ultimately, there was absolutely no way that anybody was going to get some momentum with this. So going back to my earlier example, we used a lot of tactical outdoor um, just to, to drive awareness and drive traffic to, to the site, as well as focusing on the introducers, um, in this case, which are a lot of the legal firms who hear about the problems before um, anybody else does. And by building this sort of video library, we were able to get the partners to do what they do best. So rather than coming up with a fancy headline and, and, um, and sort of campaign, the partners, once they talk, they are industry experts at what they do, and we could push that out into the market. Um, we could trend it. We could, um, uh, you know, we could really push it um, heavily. And it came to the point where people wouldn't drive any traffic to Alex Partner's site themselves, that the partners would use this as their sort of campaign splash page. But secondly, and most importantly, um, rather than talk to you about click-through rates and interactions and video downloads and all this sort of thing, um, the, the combined effort of this campaign was phenomenal um, because we got one piece of feedback. And in B2B, often, you know, when the target audiences are very, very small, we get you know, fantastic comments um, and fantastic data, but it's sort of irrelevant until you get um, you know, the real sort of touch point. In this case, Chief Exec of Ford got off a plane at Heathrow, jumped into an Alex partner's cab. Um, Alex had been trying to get talked to Ford for years, haven't got anywhere with a dialogue, um, going back to, to that sort of um, area that's been highlighted earlier. Um, got back to Heathrow about a week later, saw another Alex cab, flew back to the States, phoned up the chief exec of Alex and said that their European marketing director must be awesome, and they're all over Europe. Um, we have literally, we had 50 cabs for a month in London. Um, and you know, suddenly the budget's um, you know, looking quite healthy this year. So it's all about the, the, the content, the relevancy, the targeting, but ultimately we also need to have some really strong kind of impact driving and, and sort of relevant feedback and data off the back of it. So really in summary, I think, you know, all, all the guys have said this already, but, you know, good content, individual solutions for clients. B2B is a, is a tricky area and it's obviously underinvested in. We all specialize in it and we love it, um, but it's tough. We need the flexibility, the responsiveness, um, the immediacy of what we can do and, and, uh, and, and, and to get that dialogue up. Um, we need the relevant content, and a lot of, you know, say a lot of our clients are producing some fantastic content, and so are you. There's, a, there's an opportunity to merge and really work together on that. Um, but always remember that there are some, we've got a big toolkit available, and there's some fantastic other opportunities out there. And when you think about integration of campaigns, you know, when we're talking to, about briefs and things, we need to factor those in as well. Thank you very much.